But that's exactly how it works. Chad, this is gonna cringe. I gotta watch this. What's going on, guys? It's so Flo Antonio. Today, we're in the streets of New York City with our little brother. Old this boy. looks cringe. I'm gonna watch it. Day. And if you live in Let today's society, you probably use social media. And I wanted to see how easy it would be to get personal information from complete strangers. Well, today, we're gonna put that to the test. Let's find out. Check it out. So, Flo Antonio. Joey Sellers, Lance Stewart, Prank Invasion, Roman Atwood, Jack Jones. Hey, can I have my hand back, please? It was just a joke! No, you can't! Oc TV, Vitaly TV, Big Dos TV, Denisee TV. I'm starting to see somewhat of a trend in names here. TV. Kobe Person, Angry Picnic, That Was Epic, Andrew Hales, Cassidy Campbell, Magic of Rahat. And we're only just getting started. At one point in time, the YouTube prank genre reigned supreme over all other video styles. A legacy so deep that when we think of quintessential 2014 to 2016 YouTube, pranksters often stand out as the most memorable individuals, both for good and bad reasons. But I use the word legacy because, as we all know, pranking on YouTube slowly faded out of the spotlight. Another genre laid to rest in the graveyard of YouTube's history. History. What made pranking so attractive in the beginning? Was there a specific type of person that was attracted to the idea of being a prankster? How did fake pranks contribute to the fall of the genre? These are the questions that I hope to answer when I began my research, but this was a big topic to handle. I needed to call upon the help of a former YouTube prankster who could give me real insight into how things went down back in the pranking days. Someone with first-hand experience. Someone who witnessed pranking spectacular fall with their own eyes. I needed to call Call in the big guns. What's up guys, I'm Joey Salads, and today we're gonna to be doing a social experiment. I'll say around 2016, I think that's when the bubble started to oh, burst. Oh no. Um, and had a lot of factors had to deal with it. A prank is a mischievous trick played on someone, generally causing the victim to experience embarrassment, perplexity, confusion. Not fucking Joey Salads, and dude. Come on. The concept of jokes themselves, pranks and practical jokes done on video for commercial purposes wouldn't become a popular concept until around 2005, with shows such as Balls of Steel. <laughs> and individuals like Remy Gaylard. And while these shows were being popularized on public television, YouTube was slowly brewing in the background, ready to give individual creators the ability to share their own pranks at some point in the future. This would begin in around 2007 with individuals like Jack Vale Films, who from what I can tell had one of, if not the very first YouTube prank series titled The Pooter Fighting in Public Prank Series. This would then evolve slightly by 2009 into classics like The Greatest Freakout Ever. Okay, my mom just cancelled my brother's uh, World of Warcraft. Classic. Out. And Prank vs. Pranks first view videos like Girlfriend Fake Head in Bed Scare Prank. <laughs> Dude, I even forgot these existed. Then. A similar kind of premise. A hidden camera, a somewhat creative practical joke, and a reaction that would give oh my God, a I laugh. And in the beginning, one thing was obvious. The bar was- Why well, she died. Huh? Wait. What? That's so incredibly low no, for she what did not. To done Who said that? To get views. What the a fuck is wrong with you, motherfucker? A head next to a loved one. A freak out over a video game. In many instances, there wasn't even what a is need wrong for any you? kind of public embarrassment besides from the audience who would eventually watch the video on YouTube. <laughs> the pranks YouTube went pranks too continued far. with this fairly basic structure for a period of approximately two years until around 2011, when pranks transitioned from playing jokes on friends and family to playing jokes on the public. I just want to kiss you. Three feet away from me right now, all right? Yeah, I just want to kiss huh? you. Yeah? I just want to... Huh? In early 2011, individuals such as Vitaly would begin his Disturbing the Peace series, doing exactly what the title suggests, Disturbing the Peace. We're just trying to have some fun, looks like you're bored. Yeah, have some fun with someone else. Once again, we can tell that the bar is set pretty low for laughs. Trying to kiss random people, hopping on the back of a bike owned by someone you don't know, hugging strangers. The content was somewhat entertaining, but far from creative. However, so this was already weird. in the process of changing once again. By early 2012, as pranking became slightly more popular on the YouTube platform, in order to stand out, pranksters began to add a bit more creativity into their practical jokes. Seen with Vitaly's DUI ticket inspector prank of February 2012. I want you to stop and do a 360 and then walk again. 
360. Oh, sir. Sir, you told me to do a 360. I got All right, well, do a good 360 without any. And Remy Gaylord's Raider prank of January 2012. And what do you think this increased creativity did for the genre? Well, it led to an increase Jesus. in general video quality, and the viewership of the genre as a whole began to climb, taking the genre into the semi-mainstream. Other creators then slowly started to catch on to this climbing viewership and wanted to introduce their own video ideas, as seen with other creators in 2012, such as Magic Over Hat, where he would take his ideas to the local drive through <gasps> Oh! Oh. Uh, and it wasn't only other YouTubers that were catching on to the rising viewership, as pranking would shortly be on fine. a newly rising platform where it would see similar levels of success. Can you tell me how big my butt look in these shorts? Oh. Hey, I'm sorry, hey, prank, prank, prank! At the time, this new platform was almost unknown, represented by nothing but a green letter V, however would later become the incredibly popular media site known as Vine. Uh, I started out on Vine, and one yeah. of my biggest things on Vine was it's fashion time, and I'll destroy my family's belongings with an axe. It's time! You mop! I'm gonna kill you! Don't that! Vine was favorable for beginners in the pranking huh? world because the videos only had to be Got seven em. seconds, there wasn't a whole lot of skill required, and there was a reasonable demand for pranks on the platform. Use barrier. <laughs> Use barrier. This gave birth to pranksters such as Jack Jones. Are you serious? Smoking back your health. Oh, it was just a joke. Lance Stewart. <laughs> and of yes. course, our man Joey Salads. Yeah. What's up, guys? Who eventually realized that moving their pranks to YouTube wasn't such a difficult transition considering they already had basic video making skills. So I started yeah. to move my entire audience over to YouTube. And I'm like, what's a genre that I can transition over well for? And I would make yeah. longer versions of the bash in time. And then I'm like, okay, that's pranks. That's a prank. Yeah. So I stuck with that prank genre. And upon switching from Vine to YouTube, these pranksters would by default become the competition of individuals like Vitaly, who was really starting to steer the pranking ship into the YouTube mainstream. Vitaly's ideas had become even more creative and provocative, giving him a reputation as a tough guy who was really willing to mess with people in order to create content for his fans. You're making a scene in here. What are you doing? Na, na, Get! My mama told me. Get out of here! I was young. Mama, 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 mama. This would start to show with his classics such as Do You Even Lift Prank in January 2013. Do you even live, bro? Yeah. All right, you look on that skin delicious, man. You're the girl's bigger than you. Better start lifting. And put your number in my phone in February 2013. Put your phone number in my phone, please. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. However, it would be in October 2013 when Vitaly would post a video Guys, that would take. Oh, my admitting to a champ, because I was part of the problem. I watched some of these and I laughed. YouTube pranks into the mainstream. Whatever. The extraordinarily infamous gold digger prank. Oh, now you want to. Too bad. I don't like gold diggers. This prank is often recalled as one of the most famous viral YouTube pranks ever posted, with many of the comments referencing its significance in the early days of prank culture. Within a week, Vitaly's gold digger prank had hit 25 million views, revealing one main thing to both the viewers and other creators. There was a massive desire for pranking content on YouTube, and anyone with a camera as well as a little bit of confidence could go ahead and get themselves involved. For this reason, pranksters began to pop up left right and center, taking the genre into the mainstream. Joey Salads, Dennis TV, Moen ET, aka Oc TV, all of which popping up shortly after the realization that pranks might be the golden ticket to the chocolate factory. What's going on guys, this is Mo. This is ET. And this is Oc TV. Today we're in the hood. We're gonna go up to people oh, and ask them no. if we can pick them. But what did more pranksters on the platform mean? That's a question worth asking, and if anything, almost needs to be answered before we proceed. I remember this. It meant that it was harder to stand out. In the beginning, as previously mentioned, even the most basic of pranks could get uh, In the hood pranks? As the competition oh, no. increased, the quality, creativity, and most significantly, the ridiculousness of the pranks needed to increase in order to stand out. But back then, it was kind of a bubble that was forming where everybody needed to one-up each other and just make a bigger and better and crazier and is, you know, zombie attack in the street, you know, ripping someone's, you know, guts out, a gun getting pulled out, getting the cops, getting arrested. Now, there's no problem with this. It seems to be the natural progression of almost every genre since YouTube began. A video style gets a lot of views in the beginning with extremely basic videos. People catch on and go, oh, well, if that extremely basic video got a lot of views, then if I add a little bit of creativity and effort into it, maybe I'll get more views. And the ultimate result is a handful of creators competing for the most entertaining videos in a certain category. However, pranks are a slightly different beast in this comparison. 
because unlike almost any other genre, you can cut corners a little bit. How? A little thing by the name of fake pranks. Because everything was escalating in the prank genre, everybody needed to one up the other person. We all yeah. know how that went out. Everyone yeah. had to start. Yeah. Because they all follow one very simple slogan. Fake it till you make it. In the beginning of YouTube pranking, it was just taken as fact by every prankster's audience that the pranks were 100% real. 2013, 2014, like no one had that filter. It was like, whatever you watch, you just assume that it was real. And now it's just the complete opposite. It's like, whatever you watch, yep. you assume it's fake. Most prank videos had an authentic feel to them with many creators even going to the effort of uploading the outtakes, which gave everyone's audience almost certainty that what they were witnessing was completely authentic. Could you put your phone number in my phone? <laughs> I'm married, sorry. You're married, oh. <laughs> but as previously mentioned, as the competition increased, the authenticity began to fall out of the pranking genre. It began to seem like things didn't really add up in the prank videos that were being posted. Things started to seem too good to be true. Vitaly going and hooking up with hot girls on the beach. Uh, do you think I'm attractive? Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I guess so. I mean, you're all right. <clears throat> I'm all right, wow. Fousey Tubes escaped prisoner prank. <laughs> Ah. Sorry, stay in number two. In retrospect, there's nothing real about what was occurring in these videos. But we have to remember this was still early 2014. Nobody had that filter we have now when we water. think about whether a video is real or fake. There's that understanding now where when you see a prank video anywhere for anything, you just assume it's fake. Almost everyone was still oblivious and didn't question mm. the authenticity, but as things got more and more ridiculous, other creators began to start questioning the legitimacy of these prank videos, and it wouldn't be long before everyone caught on to how simple faking these pranks was. The ultimate result, every fake prank stuff began to get exposed. When I was talking about the fake pranks, when people started doing mm -hmm. fake to one up each other, people mm -hmm. got exposed more and more. Everybody got exposed. Which began the culture around exposing and clowning on fake pranks. There's a whole genre of content exposing the pranks and if there was one person to make everyone question the motive of each and every youtube prankster it was ethan and ela from h3h3 production yeah, and i was like angry I was like, this video is so stupid. Ethan and Ela seemed to be able to see something that no one else could, or perhaps everyone could see it and simply didn't have the platform to call it out. Regardless, as these pranks went from subtly fake to obviously fake, they were on the front foot when it came to calling them out. H3H3 Productions would upload their first prank parody in December 2014, around one year after pranking would hit the mainstream, which was around the same point that fake pranks were getting so ridiculous that making ironic prank videos was completely feasible. What's your problem, dude? It's just a prank, man. I am the ultimate prankster. In this first video, Ethan reviewed one of the most infamous fake pranks. Some of these were funny, prank though. Invasion, who was on the forefront of pushing the boundaries okay. of what you could make possible through fake. This guy was just so fake. Hey, guys, come on now. There's no way anybody believed this and that shit was real, dude. Pranks. Now, Chris from Prank Invasion is definitely one of my favorite goofsters. And oh, gaps. come on. One of the ultimate pranksters of all time. As previously mentioned, H3H3 reviews started to popularize the culture as well as make it enjoyable to clown on the pranking genre. Yeah. Then you had H3H3 you know making parodies of it and that that's what made it have the perception that it was you know part of the youtube culture h3 then began to review other pranksters such as Oct tv my parents have a big penthouse in manhattan but sometimes we come to the slums to make fun of the poor black people <laughs> and kobe person i've been talking to these girls for the last three or four days this guy's just been chatting up little girls for like three or four days straight. Ultimately increasing the popularity of the prank genre significantly. He definitely made it more popular because he yeah. made it fun and entertaining to rip on it and yeah. to pay attention to it. And while in the beginning H3H3 was a massive aid in Ethan Bradbury, the genre, here it comes time progressed, the power he had would ultimately become a negative over the long run. <laughs> Do you think you hit a point where you were just making videos with the idea that people would be reviewing them? Let's just make the craziest thing that we can possibly make in order for as many people to review it as possible to get as much exposure as possible. Was that the yep. motive by the end of it? Yeah, no, that, that was it. As time progressed, many of the fake pranksters started to catch on to the fact that they could get mass exposure through H3H3, and the stupidity of the pranks began to get out of control. When you get covered on H3H3, you'll get an extra million views, you make an extra 2,000, 3,000 bucks. Yeah. CPM's really low on pranks. 
you yeah. get covered on this person, you get more views, you get more subs. Many creators like Joey Salad stated that it became less about making actual entertaining pranks for your fans and more about just making your pranks crazy enough for H3H3 to review them because every time H3H3 would feature each prankster, they'd get millions of views. Uh... And obviously, the crazier the prank, the more likely it was that one of these creators such as H3H3 would do a review on it, speeding up the previously discussed process where creators were trying to make the craziest content possible. And unfortunately, this craziness could only go to such a height where it would eventually hit a ceiling. Do you think that there was a point where pranking was just like, it it, it had hit a ceiling, like it couldn't get any more I'll crazy? That's what happened happen with me, I'll yeah. tell you. Yeah, but it burns faster though. Like, I'm pretty sure they understood that if it, if it gives them uh, extra views now, but delegitimizes their content, then in the end, it's gonna be a raw negative. I'll tell you. In just okay, a right, yeah, all right. Everybody can see there that. There was one video that eventually burst the bubble when it came to prank review channels. And the bubble really burst with when I faked probably one of the worst videos yet. Was that the one where you bashed up the car? The Trump car one. Ah. Yeah. I got a car, put some Trump apparel on it, and we're gonna park it in a black neighborhood and see what happens. He walks away from the car, and it's, it's almost, I swear to God, it's like a comedy scene. That uh, that Trump car video, that was my big, you know, you know, real realization moment, and that's also what kind of killed pranking uh, genre like that. Think about H3H3 began to catch on. He realized that the only reason these pranksters were making these insane videos was so that he could review them for exposure. Chat, Waiting for H3H3. At the time, the big trend at the end was in the hood. Everything in the hood. True just, reaction just videos. Like, Prank invasion says. What the fuck? Me too. You can't purposely make a video for H3H3 Productions to react to. It needs to be natural cringe. And that's true. Gone wrong, gun pulled, police called, gone sexual. That, there you go. Don't become self-aware and baiting. That invalidates the cringe and automatically makes it something not interesting to watch. The ultimate result, the integrity of prank reviews began to diminish and the prank reviews began to fall out of the spotlight. However, the slowdown in fake prank reviews was really only the beginning <laughs> the yeah. There was another YouTube dark phenomena looming on the horizon. When the demonetization started to happen, it was like, you know, 50,000 views and you know, nothing really changed with the content, but then it'll be like, okay, this one got 50,000 views, this one got 3 million. This one got 20,000 views, this one got 2 million. And it was more all over the place because I, I saw the algorithm picking and choosing which one was suitable and which one was not. YouTube's Watch infamous man. apocalypse. The event that would be the end of YouTube for many controversial creators and pranksters weren't exempt from this in the least. In August 2016, YouTube would shift their focus towards family-friendly content while removing ad revenue on videos deemed to be too controversial for advertisers. Advertisers fearing backlash removed their ads entirely from YouTube. And during this oh, period, no. every YouTuber saw a decrease in revenue. This significantly reduced the income for many prank channels which had never been a problem in years prior. Social media used to be the wild wild west and this was also at the time where everything was getting monetized. You know you can get beat up, beat to a bloody pulp. Yeah, you'll... Um, can I be honest though? I know people don't like hearing the, the silver lining because it's kind of like uh, uh, it's kind of weird to hear it but I feel like this kind of helped a lot of people uh, be more receptive and maybe be more uh, um, uh, receptive to taking sponsorships and doing small sponsors, right? That give them money to replace the ads that they were making. And in the end, they're making more money with the sponsor that they're coming back, right? And now they know, they know that they're good and they have experience with sponsors. And now they're all doing, everybody's doing sponsors. Now they, now they have both. It's kind of like a win-win type of thing. They'll still have monetary. I get it, not as, a, not as a consumer, I get it. But a lot, a lot of them are like, they're like 30 30 second ads, the minute ads, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, <laughs> following the ad apocalypse, well, creators such how as that a question mark? TV would quit making pranks for a It's team. a skill that they didn't know they could have, that they learn, and it helps them market themselves. And then later on, it helped the creators a lot. It helped them a lot. Period, ultimately leading to the death of I get it channel. though. While creators like Mo and Ethan Love and Kevin on TV yeah. have only uploaded four pranks since the event over four years ago. And it makes sense, really. As explained by Joey, these prank videos had hit the point of being more of a business than a fun little home project. Yeah, social media is a business. How is that a... It's how how, what it how could that puzzle be wrong? How is that a question mark? Because we get to see question mark to everything. It's like a, like a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> What the fuck is going with this prank shit, man? Oh shit, dude! Well, YouTube began to Guys, their videos you want proof? Look at all the all the big creators or all, most creators. They all have in the video advertisement. 
Yeah, the fact that we had the, the ad apocalypse sped that up really hard, and now the ads are back, they still do them. As a result of their inability to bring in revenue, YouTube That's proof. says that monetization doesn't change how much a video is promoted, but almost every creator I've talked to has had an instance of their views dropping following a video being demonetized, which is also what I've found personally. Demonetization suppressed it, being constantly suppressed. Less content creators making pranks ultimately led to less relevancy for the genre as a whole. This then led to even fewer reviews from individuals such as H3H3, creating a downward spiral where each negative element was creating further negative elements, like the idea of the rich get richer but in reverse. And in case the landscape of pranksters wasn't already on a downward slope, Facebook was about to join YouTube by changing their algorithm, giving pranksters another nail in the coffin. When Facebook changed their algorithm, I think it was around 2017, 2016, they, they did an algorithm change that less favored articles. I'm sure many of you remember Facebook in 2015 and 2016. Oh uh, yeah, to go guy goes to the, to the hood and gets gun pulled out on live gone sexual at 3 a.m. backwards in the hood through five hospital called I like, dude so slow, I, I, listen, I remember these articles man today we're looking at so flow antonio this guy calls himself an entrepreneur but really he's more like the facebook version of that weird foreign kid who creeps out all the girls in your class i remember specifically watching like a lot of so flow on facebook in around 2015 2016 yep. And then by 2017, it was just, it was gone, man. By 2017, Facebook had implemented numerous algorithm changes such as posts with clickbait headlines will rank lower in the newsfeed. Posts that link to websites with low quality experience will rank lower in the newsfeed, which quite heavily affected pranksters like Joey Salads. Companies would take prank- Wait, why? Wait, guys, isn't clickbait the bread and butter of Facebook? That's insane. That they that literally killed the whole reason why they were alive in the Companies first place. Companies would take prank videos because they're what very I'm, clickbait. Wrong, and they'll put it on their website, put it on it's their all Facebook, the site and is, it will go viral, 100,000 plus likes. And they'll make a ton of money from the website links, clicks, and I'll get a ton of views because it's embedded. And they did this with a lot of pranksters. Once Facebook kind of took that away, that kind of went down with it. A lot of the external viewership and the external clicks completely got er eradicated because of yeah, the Facebook right. change. And this whole point about Facebook and the algorithm no longer favoring certain pieces of content also kind of plays into the next and final point. The fact that pranks just don't really compare to the comparable clickbait in recent times. The Trump administration, BuzzFeed, heavy political outrage. People these days have so much more to be angry about in comparison to some YouTuber faking a prank. However, in a backwards kind of way, a lot of these changes benefited the creator is making genuine content guys at the end of the day chat every clickbaiting killed <clears throat> clickbait and i think that that's kind of helpful right like every just every clickbaits and nobody expects anything out of the clickbait result that's just how it is and in fact that actually neutralized the nature of clickbait which was a good thing because at the time um if you had a good title you're getting fucked on you're getting apps if your title is good you're getting fucked I'd be doing a disservice to the majority of pranksters who are still thriving on the platform if I talk exclusively about the negative. Even with, 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 with the meta like big door of re-uploading somebody else's content with a better clickbait title. Boom, done. Most TV Yonk. still gaining hundreds of thousands of views per video. Yeah, my, 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 my title was that was epic game. That is what I'm making fun of, literally, every day. Almost every this is video. fucking stupid. And Cassidy Campbell, who's maintained a relatively loyal audience with his bizarre style. And I like to think that these individuals prove a point. Pranking never really died. It just evolved from who could execute the most dangerous thing to who could execute the Guys, I don't know if you guys know this chat. You guys, I started fucking trolling with, the, with these titles when uh, Valorant era a little bit. I started accelerating drops on dick on cam double big titty girl in the background insane content live free giveaway fifty dollars per viewer juicer and you're like feel good. what motherfucker i could click on your channel you afk you're doing a rerun what, what are you talking about people. and this is how it is man process the overdone fake pranking subgenre lost a lot of steam owed massively to the fall of fake prank reviews which caused the culture surrounding pranks to dissipate giving it the perception of a dead genre this, in conjunction with the adpocalypse, changes in the Facebook algorithm as well as the incomparable interest in pranks, has caused many pranksters to either quit or slow down their upload schedule to a point at which they're unable to maintain relevancy. And in 2019, even the infamous prank invasion left YouTube and disappeared off the internet, perhaps displaying the fall of the genre up until Jesus. today. We'll finish with Joey Salad's personal explanation as to why he thinks pranks fell out of the spotlight. Thank you guys for watching, like and subscribe, I'll see you in the next one. In summary, what caused the big fall of the pranking genre on YouTube as a genre is
the bubble popped of fakeness and there was just it, it it got too big and it just popped. It wasn't an interest you know anymore. I, I don't mind guys like this that, that own up to it and say, yeah, it's fake. So what? What about it? Because at the end of the day, when things are like fake, it's not that big of a deal. It's not. What's the big of a deal is people that are like downplaying it, hiding it, making it weird. That's fucking weird, dude. If you, if, you own, if, you, if you own up to it and say, yeah, I did that. I enjoyed it. Okay. Moving on. Literally, literally. That's it. Literally, life moves on. Everybody moves on. Everybody just goes Literally, on with their day. I guess those the community to talk about, Boom, like H3H3 H3 and review channels, wasn't of interest anymore because that bubble popped. It's kind of how it is. Uh, algorithm changes, uh, the demonetization, um, and also external algorithm changes. I guess that is all what played a big factor. It's funny who cares? Because a lot of people... Um, don't find the intending part to be the fact that it's real and it could happen and the relatability and the fact that uh people like uh hide it is kind of sucky because it's like oh it was well it's not real so at the end of the day it's like you have to find concepts that are entertaining on the like wwe it's fake so what everybody knows it what about it